Oh, hello everybody. It's good to be here this evening. I'd like to first of all uh, let the players and the and the, the brothers and siblings please acknowledge your coaches, your guardians, and your parents players for allowing you to be here and supporting you through your time as an athlete. David and uh, I'm talking about the psalmist David. I've heard the, the invocation was given and I heard uh, this prayer that was prayed. And uh, it's great to be here. I'm always reminded of David, the psalmist. You know, everybody talks about David and Goliath. Uh, David was prepared. I must tell you this now. David was prepared for that battle. He had been slaying lions prior to his fight with Goliath. And so it was no surprise. It was not an upset. It was, uh, it was because David was already prepared. Because when it was done, they asked him, and said, hey man, what qualifies you to do this? He said, because I've been slaying lions when they tried to attack my sheep that I was a shepherd over. And so when they got to Goliath, it was no problem. So he slayed him. And I'm always reminded of David, because you know, in my case, and I want to thank, I want to thank uh, everybody that allowed me to be here today, Eric Douglas, Mike Haynes, uh, the North Pool and Forsyth Touchdown Club, for allowing me to be here and share with you a little bit about myself. Again, I'm, I say reminded of the psalmist David, because I'm not the biggest guy. I never, I never ever was... Uh, confused with being a football player. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm very fond of the band director uh, who is uh, here. Where are you at, band director? Is he here tonight? I know we talked about the band director, but I was in the marching band and I played uh, the alto saxophone. So during that time, I got my greatest discipline. And I said my greatest discipline because, you know, how I was a kid that uh, was playing in the marching band, I wanted to be an NBA basketball player. Uh, and so you can tell I didn't make it to the NBA, but I will tell you this, I got the greatest discipline out of being in the marching band. And I say this because you know, it doesn't matter what, what your level of influence is. If you are a coach, if you are a band director, if you are the, in charge of any extracurricular activity, then you have probably the most, the most influential ability to impact the youth uh, in the world today. That's all over. So to you, I say congratulations and thank you for what you do and what you mean. Because uh, one day, guys, I'm going to tell you about someone that encouraged me. Uh, when I was in the, in the ninth grade, going into the tenth grade, I had a PE coach. And the PE coach saw me playing football, flag football. And he said, son, I think you need to go out for the team. I said, go out for the team? I don't know about that. Now, I was, I was thinking about being, in the, again, a marching band and playing, and playing basketball. We said, I don't want you to go out for the team. And he encouraged me. And that encouragement allowed me to then play high school football and just like uh, was just mentioned to you, get a full scholarship and then go on to the National Football League. And I didn't love the game. I was not the guy who you thought would least likely be playing the National Football League. So I want to encourage you. You don't have to be the biggest. You don't have to be the fastest. But no one can measure something that is within you and that is your heart. And no one can ever measure your faith as well. And I want to give you a little bit of a, a journey in my life. Uh, when I began playing, guys, I, again, I did not have the anticipation of playing the National Football League. I was always a good guy. A good guy. And then as a good guy, my grandfather always told me three things. Never forget. Never forget these things, Dex. Never let them know how much money you got. Don't keep a lot of friends. And always remember that the jails are made to put people in. And those three true. My grandfather never went to church. Uh, I never, never knew him to, to be a, a member of any church. But those are always things that he always shared with me. And as I began to journey in my path, I began to understand his, those truths. And again, I was always a, a good guy. And if those of you know the scriptures, Galatians 5, 22, 21 says, you know, love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, faithfulness, kindness, gentleness, and self-control, right? But I was exercising about seven out of those nine. And I was a good guy, but I wasn't holding true to all of them. And I was playing football, and I was something doing good, thought I was full of myself. And I went to Clemson University. Before I got there, I got on a, I got on a jet at Alabama. University of Alabama came to get me out of a little town called Sumter, South Carolina. And here I was on this jet, right? So this jet pulls up a little something South Carolina. I'm thinking I'm, I'm real big stuff. And there's this big guy that's on the plane as well. And I'm walking, I'm thinking, you know what? I'm real special because they even got players on the team that are already coming to greet me. 
and I come to find out it was the biggest 17 year old kid I ever met. <laughs> and his name was Chester McLaughlin, a dear friend of mine who went home to glory just last year. Uh, but again, he was close at Stanford, maybe you never know when your time on this side is up. But he was a champion. I'm going to tell you about being a champion. So I, I ended up, uh, we didn't go there, I obviously we went to Clemson. And, and that's where my vision began to take root. I started realizing Proverbs 29, 18 talks about where you have a vision. And I'm sure all of you young people in here, you have a vision. If not, I encourage you to have a vision. A vision, you write it down, you think about where you want to go, what you want to do. Because have a vision, and people will flourish without it, you shall perish. Now that's scripture, not that you. That's just what the scriptures say. And I've been living in that now because uh, when I went on that trip to Alabama, I had a chance to meet a guy named Bill Curry, head coach. Though I did not end up going to play for him, he is my dearest friend to this day as I serve him now at Georgia State as his character coach, team chapter. Um, and so I go to also tell you, you never burn your bridges because you know, never, never know when you have to cross back over them. And this has been a great reward uh, for me to be uh, serving at that university. And I end up going to Clemson. And I tell you what, it was going very well. Again, freshman all American and everything was real, real, real good, real special. And I got the rap, right? So I'm playing in the National Football League, we're playing the Dallas Cowboys one Thursday night. I get beat a couple times. Mike Haynes, you know, I got beat up. And Mike Haynes, who's here, I'll tell you what, he was so fast. I was 10 yards off man to man against Mike Haynes. Never ever tried to bump and run him. But I tell you, this particular game, I didn't. I didn't do a good job against those receivers. And I was cleaning up my white Target Carrera Porsche, guys. Have you ever seen one of those white Target Carrera Porsche? I had one of those, right? I was cleaning it up on Tuesday when I played a day off. I got this phone call. Again, I didn't have the greatest game now against those Cowboys. I got a phone call that said, hey, Dex, I need to see you. So then I go in and say, you need to see me? He said, hey, your, your services are no longer needed. I said, oh, wait a minute. Your services are no longer needed, yeah. You think you're going to play forever? You think you're going to you're gonna, you're gonna do it all on your own? You say, the service is no longer needed here, but simple. That's the business. But no, hey, man, you want to talk about it some more? Hey, man, I got some, you know, service is no longer needed. You're going in a different direction. Just turn your stuff in and just hope the best for you. Very humbly. So I was just like in, in Proverbs 3, 5, and 7. I learned something that particular day. I called my wife, my, my beautiful wife who's actually here. I called her and said, hey, just been cut. She said, what are we going to do now? And so I learned right there, but let's tell you about the special part of this story. I ended up going to the Rams. And the Rams had what was called a team chapel. And that's why I do what I do now. See, the Cardinals didn't have a team chapel. So sometimes things have to happen to you. Don't think the negative things are just about you because you're a bad person. Well, sometimes God has got bigger things for you. In this case, I go to the Rams and I'm sitting there. And the only reason why I'm in this room, guys, is training camp. We're in Irvine, California. The only reason why I'm sitting in the chapel is because I feel like, you know what? If I come in here, I've got a chance to make this team. So I'm in this room and that chaplain is talking to our team. And I'm really thinking, okay, all right, God, you know my plan. I'm going to get this chapel. I'm coming every week. And as soon as the season starts, I'm going to do what I always like to do. Be selfish and go and have a good time. You know what? He had a different land for me. So that's why it's never no mistake, kids. It's never no mistake why you are, where you are, time and place is everything, right? Because he started reading out of 1 Thessalonians 5 and 2. He says, do not concern yourself with this day. Do not concern yourself with this hour. For our God will come up like a thief in the night. And I'll tell you what it was like. I like this, man. In fact, we didn't have cell phones. Again, August the 14th, guys, 1994. I know I just gave up a big time frame. Most of you guys probably were not born, but it was August of 14, 1994. We were in a dorm room. I had two Christian roommates. Those Christian guys, man, I really didn't get with those guys. I had my own room. So I didn't really want to get with those guys and talk to them. You know how you can be, guys. Nah, man, I, I like the guy, but I don't want to get into that stuff. And that night, I began to chew on that scripture. If he came back that night, where would I be? And it just changed. It broke me. You ever seen a grown man cry? That's what it do when you get broken. I got broken that night. So you get broken, things change. Your mind changes. You become a, a, a new creature because you renew your mind. And that's what happened. And that was the greatest thing for football that ever happened to me, that renewing of my mind. Because after I began to play, like Romans 12, 1 and 2, 
It says, you know, you offer your body as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. Man, I tell you what, I didn't start every game for the Rams, but I played. I never had any regrets. Because I had a whole new leash on why I was playing the game. It was much bigger than catching balls, playing cornerbacks, so on and so forth. And then I started thinking and reading more into the scriptures, and guess what I got? James 1 and 2 says, consider it pure joy when you experience trials. So sometimes, guys, in life, things going to happen. You don't lose games. Sometimes the coach is not going to play you. Sometimes you won't win an award. But all those things, guys, are temporal because you know what it says? Consider it pure joy when you experience trials. So that means like David had your life. You've got to have a, a little trial in there to really bring the best out of it. You know what I mean? Sometimes you might lose a game and say, man, I'm going to get it the next time. I'm sure it will make you better. I'll make you better or make you worse. And then, guys, I began to, uh, I got into a business with guys like Peyton Manning. Uh, who's a business partner of mine, but we own a company called D1 Sports Training. And so I learned Proverbs 27, 17, iron sharpens iron. That's our mantra. That's our slogan. So God began to just do different things. Take it exceedingly and abundantly above all I could ever expect, thank God, imagine. Because again, folks will say, that's it. You didn't have the greatest of career. But you know what I say? I said, you know what? I had a great career because I didn't even plan to do this. So don't let anybody tell you about your career. <laughs> Because see, that's only in the eyes of the behold. You understand? So you you max out yourself, your body. And then you always go into Matthew 18 and 20, says two or three again. Keep somebody around you that'll keep you accountable. That'll keep you sharp. That you can be built upon and, and you can even increase your life and your standards. And that was and that was what the best thing that ever happened to me, guys. And that was my walk. That was how I began to radically change. So what I get to do now. We do uh, international American football development. A couple years ago, we were able to take about 65 students and parents to Budapest, Hungary. Now, I gotta go back to, like David, right? I played in the alto, that alto saxophone in the band, so I get to Budapest, we're doing an American football camp. I encourage some of the camp and coaches. Uh, we do this with FCA, and I'm very blessed and honored to, to be a part of this. And we take kids abroad, we don't always have to go abroad, but in this case we do. And we go American football development. And so now, remember I told you about my alto saxophone days. So we get to Budapest, and then the, the request is, is if does anybody have an instrument? If you have an instrument, please bring it to Hungary and donate it to us. So I had two. So I bring one down there, and guess what the request is, can you play it? Can anybody play? Well, you know what? That had been embedded in me. I've been there. I already played that line before, right? Like they, so I got it and played. Now, I didn't have all the notes together, but I can't mess up Amazing Grace. And I don't think any, anybody here can mess up Amazing Grace. Everybody will follow along. So I, so I played Amazing Grace. And so just go to show you whatever's in you, it's in you for a reason, it's in it for you. So you never know when it, it's time to bring those things back out. Like I told you, now, David was always prepared. And so we all can be champions. That's right. What I mean by champions, that means. Christian have an ample maximum power inside, outside, nationwide. I love that slogan because of this particular reason. Because you know what you can do? As a Christian, you got ample maximum power. That's right. He says, I know I got power. I'm not the biggest, but I got some ample maximum power. You got some ample maximum power. Inside, outside, nationwide. Because we have a belief in our faith and a higher power and that God that we serve gives us gives us stability, gives us the mentality to be all that we can be. And you can do anything that you want to do if you put your faith in God. And He will exceed your expectations. As I just shared with you, my expectations have been exceeded. As Ephesians 3, 20 21. And unto Him who can do all things above and beyond, all we can ever expect, think, or imagine, according to His power that dwelleth within us, to all generations to come. That's the power that we all have. That's the power that you can choose to have. And I would encourage you, if you don't think that you're the best at what you do, then you need to get yourself in tune with the one who gives you all power. And he will exceed all your expectations. And I've been encouraged by this, this banquet. I've talked with Eric, talked with Mike about, you know what, this is, this is something that I think as a community you've taken ownership in. And it's a great opportunity to reward the young men, the young women, I would imagine, uh, in this case, our football players, 
but I think you know what you're doing. You, you as as players, your parents, and supporters, you're doing something that is really second to none. The pioneer and the event that hopefully we can duplicate in other areas and other places. So again, I want to thank you for your time. Thank you for allowing me to share. Um, this has been an awesome opportunity for me just to talk to you young folks about getting in touch with who you are to be true champions. And every time, anytime you want to come over to Georgia State, please feel free to do so and uh, look me up. I'm glad to share with you our ministry and what we do over there. So thank you so much for your time. Dexter, thanks so much for sharing and being here tonight. A couple of housekeeping hits. Dexter, you went really short. You got another 30 minutes. You want to fill it in? <laughs> no. Again, we want to thank uh, Bo Johnson and Outback for a great job tonight. Mark Simpson and the Metropolitan Club. Let's give those guys both a big round of applause. Uh, to all the volunteers, thank you out there from, from Wise and spouses and, and students that we gathered in and, and roped in to helping out tonight to pull all the logistics off. Thank you so much. Uh, to Drew Jaberry for being here. Don't forget Drew will be out there. I also want to remind you that Keith Rice from KER 